September is a very busy time for consigners, with prominent yearling sales fast approaching at both Tattersalls and Goffs. David Cox and David Marsco, who five years ago joined forces as Baroda and Colbinstown, are currently putting the finishing touches to this year's yearling draft. David, it's a very nervous time with so much money invested by you and by your clients. It's a very nervous time, Brian, but I've seen these foals being born here. We've looked at them all year here. Uh, we've seen them prepped. We've seen how athletic they are. I love to see a good trainer get them, and then when I see them winning the track, it's satisfaction. Like athletes, horses are also athletes. They need nurturing and cuddling. What goes into a sales preparation for a yearling? The sales preparation is 10 weeks, basically. Um, you know, every horse is catered for individually. They're athletes at the end of the day, so they have individual feed regimes, exercise regimes. Um, you know, in the morning they're fed, then they could start on the walker, then there's lunging, which they have to learn to do, uh, then they go on to hand walking. So the horses get out three to four times a day, which is great. So every horse is an individual and you're watching it every couple of days to monitor his or her progress? Both exercise-wise and feed-wise. Some days you might have to back off and feed, back off and exercise. You know, they come in three sections, like they have a middle, a neck and a back end, and you have to pull the whole lot together by the time in your 10 weeks of sales preparation. And by increasing the feed and the protein, it's like any athlete, you know, if you see Paul O'Connell, the sort of protein levels he has to take to be the size and the strength he is, the same with the yearlings. Some of these horses could have 100 plus shows a day at the sales. And if they're not fit, they can't hack it. Potential buyer would come down, they look at the horse maybe two, three times. All he needs to do is some, one thing wrong during that show, and that's the buyer gone off your list. The majority of our horses we've, uh, we've pin hooked from uh, the November sales, November and December sales. We buy them as foals um, and we keep them throughout the year in uh, anticipation of the sales. So we're, we're trying to, to, to work ahead in the market to, to to buy the horse that's going to, we feel, is going to work the next year. A lot of these horses are costing north of 100 grand. As foals? As foals, yeah. So we hope to sort of double our money. Does that happen? It does, yeah. Our, our, um, we returned about a 30-40% profit on, on last year. But it, we've gone and rolled the dice again, pumped all the profits back in, and I think we've got a nice bunch for this year. The two weeks of the sales season in Ireland is going to see 1,400 horses go through the ring, all potential stars, all next year's future classic winners. And they'll generate sales of over 50 million. So it's hugely important that people come in and enjoy the experience and find that next classic winner. But it's not always the expensive horses that are the, the race horses. Look at Jack Naylor. What a filly. Cost 10,500 euros, only wow. 7,000 sterling. And with the value in that currency now, with the sterling strengthening, it's never been a better time to invest in that Irish bloodstock. I'm sure there must be one or two that have uh, taken your eye. There always is one or two, but then sometimes you get surprised because you have an ugly duckling maybe that might go through the ring and you mightn't get fortunes for, and suddenly it's the one that ends up being the racehorse. You turn up and ask it and one of your horses runs well or wins, and you know, that's the, the, the goal.